There's a significant part of me that wonders if what I saw and experienced here was actually real, because it was simply that good. Join me for this incredible tour of Vietnam's best new resort, The Regent. Welcome to Phu Quoc. For those of you that are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. My name is Kevin and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I think that the internet is in need of a whole lot more honesty when it comes to airline and hotel content, and that's why I'm here. I'm here just to be real with you. I make trip reports and high-end hotel reviews, and I always self-fund my trips. In fact, you'll always be able to find the exact price that I paid in the description below. I don't alert any companies that I'll be filming because I want as normal of an experience as possible. So in this video today, I'm going to give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, and unbiased opinion based on my own experience. Phu Quoc is a weird island, I'm just going to be honest. Ten years ago, it didn't really exist on the world stage. Then the doors of investment were swung wide open, and what happens all too often in developing markets like this one happened here. Resort development outpaced infrastructure development. Tackiness became the new normal, and of course COVID didn't help any of this as the island was hitting its stride. But let me tell you one thing that is helping this island. That's this resort. I honestly can't remember the last time that I've been so sure of something. After driving through the well-maintained development, you'll be led up a driveway taking you to the discrete primary entrance. This is a hotel which, in my book, has one very specific claim to fame since it opened in 2022. It's the only resort of this caliber which I've never heard a bad word spoken about. For that reason, the glowing reception and reviews from top to bottom, left to right, I had my skeptical cap on as I arrived. Oh God, was I wrong? And was everyone else so right? This is Southeast Asia's best new large resort, period. I've never experienced a property that was so absolutely over the top, but at the same time felt so incredibly down to earth. There are really no corners cut, but there's also no pretension. The service and the facilities were absolutely flawless, but it's actually a good value. This hotel brings a level of fresh sophistication and modern charm to Vietnam that I think hasn't existed here before. This place is my new personal favorite resort on Earth. I was actually planning my return with family while I was still here. This brings me to my first big point. If this is the direction that Regent is going, I am here for it. You may know that Regent Hotels have a history that goes back to 1971 in Honolulu, and over the years has perhaps been most famous for its Hong Kong Hotel, which was regarded as the world's best hotel in the early 80s. In 2018, IHG Hotel Group bought 51% of Regent. That stake will increase to 100% by 2026, and in the meantime, they're not wasting a second while reinventing this iconic brand. Some of you may have seen my absolutely underwhelming Regent Taipei video a few months ago. While it's clear that that is yesterday's Regent, and Phu Quoc is tomorrow's. There are currently around 10 Regents in operation, with more than 40 in the pipeline. IHG well aware that they've been missing from this luxury segment for far too long. Now that I've stayed here, I honestly cannot wait for the new Bali property to open soon. But that's enough about the brand, let's get into this place itself. Everything during my stay related to service was seamless. It's one of those places where within moments of arrival, everyone in the hotel will be learning your name, but you won't know it until in close contact. The service here has a level of intimacy with lots of curated details that make the room count a little bit difficult to believe. In total, the hotel has 179 suites housed in the two towers, one of which we're in now, plus an additional 123 villas blanketing the property between the towers and the beach. The hotel was designed by Blink Design Group and seamlessly combines a few different design languages. Modern East Asian minimalism, traditional Vietnamese Yan Nha design cues, lush tropical surrounds in every direction, and pops of saturated and vibrant colors and textures. Case in point, this beautiful crystal glass artwork by Czech group Lasvit. Fit. 
flanking either side of the corridors that we just passed through are the reception area and the lobby lounge. Check-in took place entirely in the lobby lounge, whereas check-out took place in the reception area. If you noticed as we drove up the driveway, we went up quite a steep incline. I think this is a brilliant design idea, which brings the lobby off the ground and gives the outdoor views a sense of seclusion. Just across in the gorgeous sunken living room, you'll be welcomed with a refreshing iced tea as well as a dipped madeleine. In the reception area and here in the lobby lounge, we can see the very modern interpretation of the Vietnamese Yen Nha style, which is known for creating spaces around or adjacent to beautifully landscaped courtyards, connecting different parts of the house, or in this case, the hotel. Here's your friendly reminder to click that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, all free for you by the way, to help the channel grow. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. Let's head outside, into what feels like a bit of a different world. As we're walking down here, I think it's actually a good point to interrupt and show the layout of the hotel to help you understand what we're walking through. So let's take a look at the location. Phu Quoc is an island in the Gulf of Thailand, Vietnam's largest island, though it is actually a lot closer to Cambodia than to mainland Vietnam. While you can take a ferry here from the mainland, the most popular way to arrive is via the airport in the middle of the island. From there, the hotel is an easy 15 minute drive to the south. Zooming in, we can see how nice and neatly the resort is laid out. Up top here, we have the two tower areas, which is where all of the suites are. In the center area, we have the true core of the resort. Here we have all of the dining venues, as well as the two largest pools on property. Then all of these smaller houses are the villas. Each structure has multiple villas of different types, but they're all neatly combined so that you'd never know that you had a neighbor. Perhaps the only exception to this would be the villas that face inwards towards the two giant ponds. So for reference sake, right now we're walking down one of these paths that snake in between the villas. I think one of the best things about this being a brand new resort is the landscaping design and how grown in it is. Far too often resorts, especially in Vietnam, will open with what feels like a lawn and 600 naked palm trees, simply expecting everything to naturally grow in over like the next, I don't know, 20 years. Here is very different though, and it's a feature that truly distinguishes this property from other newer properties on the island. Phu Quoc, I should probably mention, is where this channel actually started. My very first video was of a resort on this island. Since then, I visited and filmed 11 other properties on the island, and have visited a few others long before the channel started. So I'm not just showering these praises as someone who's just landed. I've seen the vast majority that this island has to offer over the past decade. Here we are now arriving at the largest of the pools. One of the, are, are you ready for this? One of the 262 pools on the property. Which brings me to my second big point. This resort is lounger heaven, truly. Look at this pool, the surrounds, the canopies, the hidden nooks. Look at it all and how well done it is. All the pools here are of equal caliber. And since around three quarters of the rooms have their own pools, plus this giant private beach, these pools will likely never be that crowded at all.
There are honestly certain angles around this pool area that just look too good to be real. Rarely, if ever, do I mention room rates in videos, because, of course, they can vary wildly, and they're always subject to change. But I think it's worth a mention here. I'm writing this script in late November. I've just checked the rates on a random date in every month through next October, avoiding official holidays. And the average rate for their king suite, breakfast included, is 484 US dollars. I think you'll agree by the end of this video, that that represents a very good value in a world where sometimes hotels feel like they're going to start charging for hot water soon. Just in front of the pool area is the beach pool. Quite amazingly, this is my least favorite of the four primary pools here. Considering how beautiful it is, that says a lot. This pool is directly in front of the lunch and dinner venue Ocean Club, which we'll get a better look at later on. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next five videos to come out, as well as other bits and pieces like the soundtrack titles featured in this video. On your way down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full-length videos every Thursday and Saturday. For now though, let's change elevation a bit. Each of the two towers has its own rooftop infinity pool, and I don't think I even need to mention that they are quite well outfitted, and just about as gorgeous as a rooftop could possibly be. Okay, back down to Earth. Let's continue on with my Lounger's Paradise theme and go check out the beach. Located on Long Beach, the best part of the beach here is the fact that it's, well, long and taken care of, really well taken care of. 
The region is directly next to the Intercontinental, a review of which is coming soon. And while their beach is connected, the Regents is just so much nicer. It's much deeper and has a wide variety of seating options, all well spread out, so that no matter if you're chilling in a hammock or sitting in a chaise, you're never going to feel like you're on top of your neighbor. I'll let the beach speak for itself. I'll just encourage you to look out for how much space there is and how well maintained the sand is. Okay, now it's time to actually go and check out my villa for this stay. I had a King Ocean Suite booked with points and was upgraded to a Garden Pool Villa due to IHG Platinum status. The room numbering system takes a little bit of getting used to. My villa is 5112. 5 refers to this area of the villas, 511 refers to this full single story building, and then once inside the front double doors, it splits off into two separate attached villas. And welcome home. I'm going to talk about my favorite and least favorite details in a bit, but before I let you go, I need to mention my third big point for this video. Comfort, comfort, comfort. There's nothing in this room or in this resort as a whole that puts anything above comfort. Here, they found a perfect balance between modern design and spaces that are just inviting you to have a seat. I also think that comfort extends beyond just how plush every surface is. Take a note at how full this villa is. It is decorated as if it's a home, not as if it's some empty hotel room. Part of this also extends to Regents with compliments concept, which means a whole lot of things. In the room, it means that there are a bevy of welcome amenities. Everything in that minibar is free, there's daily complimentary laundry service, and a long list of what is literally called comfort essentials, available for free or to borrow. It truly does present you with the comforts of a really, really nice home. Okay, have a bit of an explore, and I'll be back with the details in a bit.
Okay, it's all about the details, so let me start with my least favorite ones, because there's only one of them, and it's related to the layout of these two double villa structures. As we walked in, you could see the amount of space that is wasted just for that sprawling entrance. It's enormous. I'm sure it makes for a great option if you want to combine the rooms, but otherwise it's just awkward dead space. Okay, now onto the good things. It's hard to know where to begin to be honest, I almost just followed you throughout the room and named everything. So I'm going to start with an all-encompassing, quote, everything that's free, unquote, in the room. In this case, it's, it's really not that the mini bar, or as it's called here, the refreshment gallery is free, but it's the quality of items that it's stocked with. Imported packaged foods in Vietnam are not cheap, and seeing them along with four types of Nespresso pods, four loose leaf teas, an assortment of drinks, welcome chocolates, wine, fruit. I mean, they really know how to say welcome to region. My free stuff comment extends to other things though, such as the bath amenities. Aqua de Parma is always nice to have to begin with, but these are not itsy bitsy little bottles. Even the stationery is gorgeous, and there's an entire story about the beautiful pattern that I'll talk about in a bit. My second favorite detail is, quite amazingly, the attention to detail in the closets. From the hangers to the shoe polish kit, the complimentary laundry service binder, the slippers, the robes, the hat box. I mean, come on. This is a closet that you'd expect at a hotel for twice the price. Let me dwell on those robes a bit. This is a new concept by Regent where they're focusing on one color and one custom design pattern to use in each hotel. I think it's best that I just quote them here. Quote, It is inspired by a king's legend on this idyllic Vietnamese island. The historical site of the Kin's Well in Antoi Town is said to have sprung into life in the 18th century when Emperor Ya Long, the first king of the Nguyen dynasty, plunged his sword into a stone. Starved of water and food, Lord Nguyen called out to the heavens whilst being pursued by local rebels. Upon removing his sword from the stone, a stream of fresh water magically erupted, and many fish surfaced upon the sea, saving the king and his army. The illustration was created by Sado, a renowned Romanian artist. Primary symbols used in its development include the freshwater stream and sea, Lord Wien and his sword, lucky rice fish, supported by black pearls, and Fuwak peppercorns. My final favorite detail is the outdoor space. A lawn, a pool, a table and chairs, two chaise loungers, plenty of sun and shade, an outdoor shower. This area brings well thought out to a whole new level. Okay, now it's time to go over to some of the dining venues. The first venue we're going to look at is Oku. Oku is a French-Japanese omakase restaurant and known to now likely be the best restaurant on the island. Access through a sacred door in Oku or via the Rice Market restaurant, the next venue to check out is Bar Jade, which was designed as a speakeasy and fashioned after the interior of a Pullman car.
Next up, we have the Rice Market, which is an all-day dining venue. I'll give you a full tour of the breakfast buffet here in the morning. For now, just a few overview shots of the sprawling eatery. As dusk begins to fall, I'll remind you that there's still one pool that we haven't seen yet. That one is on the roof of the Sky Wing and has some spectacular views of the sunset. Also up here are the Foo Bar and the Regent Club. I did not have official access to the Regent Club, but the staff allowed me to take a few clips since no one was inside. But this is more than just a standard club. Unless your room includes it, it is generally $150 per person per day and includes everything from Range Rover transfers to all-day champagne to a personal concierge. Besides all of that though, the space is just beautiful, especially just after sunset. The other venue up here, of course, is Foo Bar, which is open in the evenings with a strong focus on gin-based cocktails. Okay, time to head back down to Ocean Club for dinner. This meal is literally the only bone to pick future pun intended, with my entire stay. The service was fantastic. The space is beautiful and laid back. The menu itself looked really promising, really promising. My issue was the execution of the food. After many years in the restaurant industry, I can tell you precisely what was going on here. A fully qualified executive or head chef came in and designed the menu and trained the team on the menu. But over time, the team were given, or perhaps took, a bit of creative license in the exact recipes and techniques, most in the name of time or cost savings. My appetizer, as beautiful or cute as it was, was really, and I mean really, difficult to get down. Pate and terrines are a way of life in Vietnam. It wouldn't be a stretch to say that I've eaten it weekly for a decade, but this was entirely form over taste. Described as foie gras terrine, tomato glaze, Phu Hoc pepper bellinis, lemon jam. The tomato glaze tasted like red, the pepper bellinis tasted like nothing of the sort, and the lemon jam was absurdly sweet. As for the terrine, zero seasoning was literally like taking a bite of fridge-cold, mealy, boiled liver. My main dish was fish, listed as Phu Hoc pearl grouper filet, burnt Brussels sprouts, heirloom tomato salsa, spicy tom yum sriracha. To say this was a fail, would be an understatement. First, the filet was rolled. I didn't know, but okay, could still be good. But the center was the texture of canned tuna. What was supposed to be burnt Brussels sprouts were in fact raw shaved sprouts. The heirloom tomato salsa, it might have been tomato water in caviar form, but honestly, it didn't taste like much of anything. Lastly, spicy tum yum sriracha, there was not. 
Not to mention, I had six pin bones. I ate around half of the main dish and they saw the bones on the plate and offered a dessert on the house. I chose the yuzu tart, listed as orange sable, yuzu cream, mango sorbet, lemon meringue. The mango sorbet was delicious. The lemon meringue was missing. The yuzu cream had the mouthfeel of warm margarine and the orange sable had the scent of bad refrigeration. The red jelly on the plate, I have no idea. Considering how incredible this resort is, I really cannot explain quite how disappointing this meal was. Likely one of the worst executed, supposedly nicer meals that I've ever had in Vietnam. When I got back to my room, it had been beautifully turned down with some very nice details. From the perfectly shaped long cosmetic counter liner, to the wrapping of all of my cords, to a very thoughtful microfiber cloth next to my laptop. The next morning, I went for a walk around the property before breakfast opened up and I got a sense of the on-site spa's serenity. But now, time for breakfast. If I'm honest, I was actually starving by this point. I would have eaten a rubber tire if it had been in front of me. This is likely one of the most theatrical buffets that I've ever seen in Vietnam. Maybe the most segmented is a better word. The restaurant, Rice Terrace, is sprawling, and so is the buffet, with portions of it set up in different areas. My only complaint about the buffet itself was that even 10 minutes after opening, there were quite a few hot dishes not available yet. That said, I thought the balance between Western, East Asian, and Vietnamese dishes was spot on. There was also a small supplemental egg menu. The chilled items and fruit had their own designated room with staff on hand for the entire time, beautifully cutting the fruit to serve.
Serving perfectly skinned pink pomelo and pre-opened Rambutan is honestly just about as good as a fruit game can get for me. Last up, there was also a separate room just for the bakery. My eggs benedict, the eggs themselves were nicely cooked, but it was a shortcut blender hollandaise made with lime juice instead of lemon. Again, too much creative freedom. Okay, so as we take a look at the gym, let me wrap up what was a very anticipated review. It is incredible. Dinner was really the only fault that I found. Had it not been for that, this would have easily been a perfectly scoring hotel. The meal is reflected in my score, so let's just forget about that and focus on the full experience for a moment. This resort is meant to give you everything that you've ever wanted or needed in a resort, but just enough of it to make you wanting more. The market in Fukuang is not a place where an Amman, or a one and only, or a Rosewood would be appropriate, yet. The island is still trying to find its identity. For years, the JW Marriott led the way with this. In fact, you can see the JW design elements literally all over the island, tacky as can be. The region is not only a hell of a lot better than the JW, it is also the perfect next step for the island, and frankly for Vietnam. The region Fukuang will define Vietnamese tourism, in the same way that the Intercontinental Sun Peninsula and the Four Seasons Nam Hai have before. The region Phu Hoc is literally a gift to Vietnam, to all of us really, and one that I hope desperately is appreciated and well used. This one, I assure you, I will be returning to many times to come. So I really do hope that you enjoyed this full resort tour today. If you did, please click that thumbs up button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on any of my twice weekly content. I release full length videos every Thursday and Saturday. I'll see you next time on board Etihad Airways in business class. And oh yeah, thanks for watching until the end.